Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf here at Second Swing Minnetonka with a very special guest. It's Tom Fisher from Titleist today because we've got new Titleist fairway woods in the GT series, GT2 and GT3. Tom, um, we're very excited about it. Yep. Uh, new medals from Titleist is always a big mm -hmm. deal. Um, TSR was so great that yep. I'm kind of wondering how the heck these can be any better. So let's get into it right now. GT2, GT3. What's the story behind GT? Yeah, so GT, generation technology. Um, so very similar to the driver where we're using a brand new construction um, in order to get more performance out of the product. When we were looking at TSR3 or TSR2 and 3, we were, and even one model, we were looking, what could we improve? And the three things that we really kind of honed in on was how do we improve the flight? How do we improve the face performance? And also how do we maybe change shapes and profiles to give golfers you know, better looks mm -hmm. and, and better options? So again, similar to like what we did with the driver, both of these fairway woods have this multi-material um, um, construction. So we're using the same proprietary matrix polymer uh, that's, that gives us that sound and gives us that weight savings that we want, um, again, in a seamless package that allows us to then move center of gravity where we want it. So CG in these fairway woods have been moved lower and more forward okay. than the prior generations. And what's that gonna give to the golfer? Well, in the GT2, it's gonna give you a higher launch with a lower spin rate. So for those golfers who really kind of want distance, maybe off the tee or off the ground, that's going to be a really good option for you. And then the GT3, CG has moved lower and forward, but not quite as much. We understand that we still want to get a higher launch, but some golfers need you know, a little bit more spin. So yep. this is kind of more of a mid spin. Um, so for golfers who maybe need the ball in the air a little longer, or maybe want some workability and shot shaping, um, the three can be a good option. Mm -hmm. They both also have an L cup face. Which is, what, which is a new design, a new face that's giving performance off low shots. So when you hit the ball low in the face, there's a few things that, you, you can, that can happen. It doesn't sound very good. It doesn't feel very good. You can lose ball speed. Launch can be low and spin can be high. So by making this face wrap around the sole, making this face stronger and therefore thinner can give you more deflection down there that can obviously help to improve all those performance attributes. Wow, so tons of technology packed in tons. there for sure. Let's talk about, uh, one thing you mentioned to our team was the 13 and a half degree option. Yeah. So there was a TSR2 plus in the previous yeah, generation. That's, right. that's now kind of packed into the whole lineup here of GT2 and GT3. That's exactly right. The plus version has always been our oversized fairway wood. So around 200 cc. That has now been incorporated into the GT2 uh, fairway wood family. So a 13 and a half degree is that 198, 200 cc, which is that oversized mm -hmm. fairy wood shape. Um, and then when you move into the 15, 16, five, it gets down to more the traditional volume cc around 170, 175. So yeah, no more plus because it's incorporated into the, into the two. So why do, a, why do the plus model or the oversized in a 13, five? Well, that's the club that's generally gonna probably be used off the mm -hmm. team more. So why not give that golfer you know, a bit more confidence right. and, 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 and a better chance of a better performance. So throughout the whole line then, in terms of lofts and, you know, available dexterity and things, that's not really changed aside from that point um, in the past series, right? There's a slight change also in the okay. three, sorry. Uh, the 13.5 is not available in the GT3 right, okay. anymore. Um, so just in the GT2, but you know, when a golfer, like I said, needs a 13.5, they need off the big, the they need off the tee, they need the bigger head. So that's gonna be a great, uh, a great option for that type of golfer. Okay, and then in terms of one last question here on tour adoption. Mm. So how have these been adopted on tour? Is there a ratio of GT2 versus GT3 out there? Yeah, I would say, right, I mean, right out the gate, you know, we've obviously, uh, you know, had a massive adoption. So out of our drivers, we've had the number one driver on the last three tour events, you yep. know, going from Memorial, US Open to Travelers. And, and, and then 60% of those drivers that were in play for Titleist is in a GT. So huge adoption. Like I said, GT2 is getting some sneaky good use out there. Yeah. I think that's with the performance across the face, but what we've also done with the shape. Um, so I would say, you know, it's about 55, 60% of the two at the moment, but that should even out as more and more people adopt the GT fairway, uh, GT uh, drivers. And in the fairway, we're still seeing a few more GT3s okay. probably in the fairway wood, um, certainly being adopted really good. But you can see what tour players off the tee, they're looking forward to hit a number. So right. giving that extra spin can just help them to control their distances. Um, that can give them, you know, more confidence off the tee. Absolutely. Well, I know we're really excited about uh, Titleist GT fairways. We're going to do some testing here, but um, we appreciate everything that you've done. I know our, our team was really excited today to learn about the products. So um, 
Titleist GT Fairways. We're going to do some testing, and of course, we can't wait to get um, our fitters going on as well. So thank you, Tom, for the time. Jerry, thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, so Jake, mm -hmm. we're outside on the driving range here at Braemar Golf Course. Yep. GT Fairway Woods. Um, we've got a GT2 7 wood and a GT3 3 wood that we'll test today. Um, kind of cool that they sent us a 7 wood. I know you and other fitters have been talking to me for the last year and a half now, how we're, really how effective 7 woods have been and how much golfers are loving them now as an option. So kind of interested to see what the GT2 7 wood shows us here. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I carry a 7 wood myself. It's my favorite club in the bag. It has accounted for more eagles than any other club I've ever had. I yeah. mean, this thing, you can fire at pins from 200 plus yards and it stops like that. Yeah. I absolutely love this club for that reason. I've had hybrids, they stay too low for me. This, I can get through the rough if I need to. I can hit a high shot, I can hit a low one if I need to. It's, it's very versatile. No, I like that, I like that. So GT2, seven wood to start here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let's, let's let it rip and see what happens. Let's do it. Oh goodness. That's the flight I'm looking for. Yeah. That'll work. Wow, one five zero on the smash on that wow. one. I bet it probably felt like that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, so we got, this is great. There's also plenty of spin on that one. So mm -hmm. we got that over 4,000 spin, yeah. 235.5 carry, 247.6 on the total. That is exactly what I use this club for. Yeah? Yeah. You're, right you're in that is, 230, 240 range, it's For your carry? Perfect, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it did, just did that yeah. for you. Nice high draw, 109 feet in the air. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that a lot. I got a little toey. Hooked it. Okay. Yeah, actually, you, it, I mean, for being a toe shot, mm -hmm. it's still. I mean, you carried it two twenty seven point nine, <laughs> and it was two forty six point nine total. So it's almost the same total distance as the yeah, last shot. It just doesn't fall out of the air, which I love. Start out to the right. Starting yep. to come back. So here's a question for you then, mm -hmm. as a fitter. So. Seven woods are interesting because, you know, we talk a lot about spin rates with, you know, yes. your four iron, your three wood, but mm -hmm. what would be like, you know, for you, what in your spin rate for a seven yeah. wood, what are you looking at? Around so I'm 4, looking 000? at around 4,000 to 4,500 okay. Okay. with a land angle over 40. Okay. So I'm basically looking to get the same kind of launch conditions, maybe a little lower spin than you'd see like a yep. six iron. Um, but yeah, I mean, I basically view this as an extension of my iron set just because of the peak height and spin rate you can get with right. it. Right, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because I know that first ball was actually right at about really close to 4,500 spin. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one here, I know you maybe caught a little toey out there to the right. It was yep. 3,500. Yeah, but even yeah. still, you carried it 237.5. Wow. So, you know, a little bit out to the right, mm -hmm. but still, it actually drew back nicely for you. Yep, so absolutely. Oh, yeah. I should have a little more spin on it, I think. That draw is just so money for you, isn't it? It's what I play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can see why. You know, mm -hmm. basically every shot for you is, is around 100 club speed and a, around 150 ball speed. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty close. 43.06 like on the spin there. 234.3 mm -hmm. is your carry right in the range. Yep. 246.1 on the total. Mm -hmm. What's the peak height on that? That one was 118 yeah, feet. I so which is exactly that. what you're looking for. Landing mm -hmm. angle 46.3. Plenty, right? That thing stop it for sure. Absolutely. Let's get one more good one here. I don't know much more we need to see from this thing. I want to try and hit that kind of flighted shot where if I need to hit something like hit something low? 60. Okay. Ooh. Trying to kind of smush one out there. Oh, yeah. Drew a little much, but it was the flight I was looking for. So you can flight it if you need to, like yeah, you said. 100%. Yeah, a little bit more ball speed there. You were, sleeping for two, you were shooting for 260. Uh -huh. You got 254.9. Yeah, yeah. So close enough. Um, Pretty good though, honestly. Let me see some totals here. If we go to the numbers, average spin 4021. Mm -hmm. Probably checks the box there. Yep. 233.8 on the carry, 249.8 on the total. Perfect. So we're right in that range. Uh, the smash factor was 149. That, yeah. That's pretty solid. That'll do. So um, yeah, it seems like it checks all the boxes here. And again, you said 40 degrees landing angle is what you're looking for. And even, and 40 plus. Yeah, like, even with that low one that we're accounting in there, it's 40.7. Yeah. So no, I mean, I absolutely love that. You said 46.5 was around my average for the, for no, the land angle? The, the, that was the average. The 40.7 yeah. was the average. Okay, um, gotcha. Yeah. But that's including the one that, that last lower. one yeah, right 100%. there. So those other ones were going into the 
you know, mid 42, 43, up to 46 on. Yeah, the uh, one, so. average landing, I'd say, usually sees anywhere from like 44 to 46. So yeah. this checks every box I'm looking for in yeah. wood. Yeah, that's, I mean, clearly, how about the feel of it now? And then we'll get to the, the GT3. Uh, it felt feeling. awesome. Yeah. I mean, I don't use that word lightly. Yeah. It was awesome. Like, yeah. it, it felt like I mushed every single ball. I feel like it sprung off the face, and I could just see it peaking yeah. super high in the air. I mean, everything I look for in the seven wood in terms of ball speed, spin rate, peak height, it hit all three. Yeah, it's uh, clearly a good performer for you. Mm -hmm. um, all right, now what I want to do is get the GT three wood. Yep. GT three three wood in your hands mm -hmm. here, and we'll see how that goes. Absolutely. All right, GT three now. Yep. What do you see with that when you put it down to the dress? I mean, this looks like a very traditional Titleist fairy wood. I call it kind of like a three quarters pair. Mm, yeah. It's narrower down here, a little more rounded at the top, especially in the toe here. I've played many Titleist three woods in the past. This looks very, very comfortable. I actually had the TSR three fairy wood for quite a while. Um, I do notice the face looks a hair deeper, which is yeah. very good for players that like to swing down and take a lot of right. turf with the ball. This is a lower spin fairway wood, so it performs better for players that are steeper on the ball. Yeah. So if you're someone that takes a, a divot with a fairway, this is definitely a place to look. Interesting. Yeah, that's a good, that's some good feedback there. Ooh. That's pretty good for a toe ball. How about that one? That was a toe ball? Yeah. Okay, I suppose now that I look at the numbers here, it's a, you got a, kind of a one four four smash, so yeah. not exactly not perfect, perfect on that contact. Okay, so three a little over three thousand spin snail though. Wow, that might surprise you. Huh? That surprised me a lot. Right traditionally, I don't spin my three woods too much. Like yeah. I'm fighting to get to three thousand. That's why I, I locked this up. How I usually played at about sixteen point five. Yeah, um, three thousand out of that's pretty good. Yeah, it was actually thirty three thirty eight. Wow. So plenty of spin. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is a good thing with these ferro woods. 100%. That one I caught better. That one is launched. Yep, more ball speed there at 154.9. So a total of 260.5 spin rate was 38.30. So wow, you're getting plenty of spin. That, yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, because I know that's the concern with uh -huh. a lot of golfers. Most golfers is three wood. That this either, either doesn't get high enough or doesn't yep. spin enough to where it kind of dives out of the sky and it's almost counterproductive to have one in the bag. 100%. So, yeah, I mean, the reason I play this usually at 16.5 is to get a little bit more spin there. I could almost play this at just at 15. 15. Yeah. Yep. That one I got a hold of pretty good. Yes, you did. 151.7 on the ball speed there. Yeah. Again, 34.73 spin, so it's wow. still spinning comfortably. And again, we're outside using a range ball, so mm -hmm. that could be part of it. But as you said, you know, you, we, there's you know range balls in the in the store, yeah. And it's always picking up the spin rate relatively accurately there. It feels like relative yeah. to the tour van. So yeah, our, these are similar balls we use in our demo base. Yeah. How about that there one? There we go. That's probably the best fairway would have hit today. Yeah. Yep. That's the fastest ball speed I've seen at 156.2. Wow. 31.28 spin, so still That's plenty. Perfect. 271.6 total. How's I'll that? Take that. How's that? All right, so good numbers there overall from the mm -hmm. GT3. We saw the spin right in that 3,400 range on average with a uh, total distance average of 261.2. With that last one, you really got over 270. Yeah. Um, I mean, what do you what do you think about the GT3? Is it something that you're also going to consider throwing in the bag? Yeah, I mean, this impressed me a lot. Like yeah. I said, I, I played the TSR3 in the past. I, I felt it was maybe a little harder to hit than I mm -hmm. wanted. I've gone to something a bit more forgiving. This has opened the door back up for titles for me. I mean, this yeah. felt super easy to hit. The spin rate is right where I want it to be. Yeah. That low 3000s number is perfect. Um, and I want to experiment this thing, honestly, playing at 15. Like I said, I've played 16 fives for most right. of my life just to get more spin on there. We're seeing... Some spin rates that were actually, I'd say, a hair too high, where I could actually get a little bit more ball speed, a little bit more distance out of this club by playing it at 15 and still hit, hit the spin windows that I want. Right. It's actually, it's fascinating how these spin windows were perfect for you, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just over 4,000 with the 7 wood. Yep. And then the 3 wood at 3442 mm -hmm. is like right exactly, exactly what you were what asking for. for. So, um, clearly some great testing here from the Titleist GT Ferry Woods. Um, we'll wrap it up here in the final thoughts. Perfect. All right, Jake, testing complete there of the Titleist GT Woods. Um, Tom told us all the tech involved there, and yep. then we saw the tech go to work here for mm -hmm. you in the performance. So um, let's kind of have you break down each model and sort of the golfer that, uh, or golfers, I guess, out there that'll you know work 
uh, with it best and mm -hmm. it'll be in their bags and, and work the best for them. Um, I guess my initial thought is just that both are awesome and they both are playable because of how friendly for you anyway the spin rates were in for the sure. testing. I mean, yeah. so GT2, GT3, a lot of it could come down to personal preference, but of course there is, you know, some defining characteristics in there too. Yeah, I mean, I would say the best way to break these down is really ball flight. Yeah. GT3 is generally going to be a little lower launching. GT2 is going to be a little higher launching. Yeah. Um, T, sorry, the GT3 is also going to be a little bit lower spin option as well. Uh, if you're someone that likes to shape the ball or you're looking for a lower flight, GT3 is a good place to go. Yep. If you're looking for a fairway that's super easy to get in the air, it's going to have a little more spin, a little more forgiveness, go to that GT2. Yeah, I think there's a, you know, it, it's cool that they have, uh, there's only two models here in the fairway woods right mm -hmm. now from Titleist, and I think there's, uh, but there's only two, but they cover everything a golfer might Absolutely. need. You know, you get the, the GT3 offers you the workability as well, we mentioned mm -hmm. with the center of the gravity, with the, the track on the bottom there. Yep. And then, of course, well, both have the Surefit Hosel. Mm -hmm. um, but then the, the GT2 has that little bit, like, it's kind of, um, you know, shallower face. It's flatter. Yeah. Help get the ball a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. We saw great stuff from the 7-wood here in testing from you. And it's, again, I'm going to harken back to the spin rates. I mean, the fact that you have a specific number you're looking for, mm -hmm. and you come out here and you haven't really done a lot of, you have done no outside testing with GT yep. yet. Did a little bit indoors, but... Mm -hmm. You come out here, have a certain spin rate that you're looking for, and it delivers exactly that. Mm -hmm. Is a really good testament and a really good first impression for these. And that I think just speaks to that Surefit Hosel because I adjusted yeah. both of these to how I typically yeah. play a fairy wood, and it was right on the money. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that, but that's a, a shout out again to the Taylor Surefit Hosel, one of the I guess friendliest items that you guys work with every single day. I would day. definitely say so. I mean, it allows us to adjust loft and lie angle independent of each other. So if I need more loft and an open face, I can do yeah. it. Exactly. Well, golfers, Titleist GT Fairy Woods now available for fittings at Second Swing. Make sure you schedule yours. Um, see what kind of performance you might be missing out on in your bag currently, and then add it to your bag so you can play better golf and get that perfect gapping through maybe your iron Fairy Woods, and then, of course, GT drivers as well. Check out that video, too. Jake, thanks for joining. Great stuff today out here on the driving range. Thanks for having me.